chapter wise list of all my videos is available at this point for dvd pen drive please write an email to me these videos they do not require internet they play offline there is no problem of buffering and please subscribe to my channel for regular updates thank you thank you for your support once again now we shall revise all the concepts that we have learned in case of congruency and similarity of triangles a revision of these concepts will help to act as a ready reckoner and it will be a review and summary notes about everything that we have done for congruency and similarity you can use this to review your concepts just in time we learned that congruent triangles are those triangles which completely overlap each other for example these two triangles will be congruent if they overlap each other completely there are various tests for congruency the first test is triple s rule that is if the respective sides are equal this side is equal to this side and this side is equal to this side and this side is equal to the third corresponding side then the two triangles will be congruent according to the triple s rule we just have to ensure that all the three sides are correspondingly equal then we can be very sure that the two triangles are congruent to each other and we do not have to proceed any further in this regard the other rule of congruency is asa or aas rule in this rule two triangles are congruent two triangles are congruent if any two angles for example if this angle is equal to this angle and this angle is equal to this angle if any two pairs of angles are correspondingly equal and any of the sides of the triangles are correspondingly equal then also the two triangles will be congruent to each other in this case this angle is equal to this angle this angle is equal to this angle and this side is correspondingly equal to this side these two triangles are congruent by the aas or asa congruency rule the asa congruency rule is just another form of the aas rule according to the asa congruency rule any pair of sides is correspondingly equal and the two adjacent angles are correspondingly equal then the triangles are said to be congruent by the angle side angle rule angle side angle rule is just another form of aas rule why because if this angle is equal to this this angle is equal to this then the third angle the third pair will obviously be equal because the sum of angles of any triangle has to be 180 degrees so if this is equal to this and this is equal to this then obviously this will be equal to this so if a triangle pair of triangles is congruent by double as rule then it is also congruent by the asa rule and if it is if a pair is congruent by the asa rule then the same pair will be congruent by double as rule also the next rule is the side angle side rule this rule says that two triangles will be congruent to each other if this side is equal to this side and this side is equal to this side and at the same time the included angle which has to be the included angle is respectively equal to the included angle of the other triangle then these two triangles will be congruent by the sas rule of congruency the more important thing is that the angle has to be included angle so if you have two triangles like this and this side is equal to this and this side is equal to this 
but this angle is equal to the third corresponding angle then these two won't be congruent they won't be congruent because for sas congruency rule the included angle has to be equal so in case these two triangles had to be congruent then it is this pair of angles that should have been equal instead of this pair then we have the rhs congruency rule this rule is a special rule for the right angle triangles it says that if you have two right angle triangles that guarantees that one of the angles is 90 degrees then if the hypotenuse are respectively equal the hypotenuse has to be equal if the hypotenuse of the two triangles are equal then any other pair this equal to this or this equal to this will do so by the right angle hypotenuse side rule in a right angle triangle the hypotenuse has to be correspondingly equal and if any of the other two sides is respectively equal then also the two triangles will be congruent according to the rhs congruency rule since a right angle triangle is also any other triangle so if you have two right angle triangles such that their hypotenuse is equal this side is correspondingly equal to this side and this side is equal to this side even in that case you can say that they are congruent by the triple s rule but we don't have to go that far because if the angles triangles are by definition right angle triangles then it is just sufficient to check the equality of the hypotenuse and equality of any other pairs of the sides being equal let us now review the rules for similarity i have missed the slide for similarity so let me write similarity first here two triangles will be similar if there is a sort of proportionality between two triangles this triangle is a smaller version of this triangle otherwise they look similar in all other respects to prove the similarity of two triangles we have various rules of similarity one of the rules is the double a rule of similarity this rule says that two triangles will be similar to each other if any two angles are correspondingly equal if this angle of this triangle is equal to this angle of this triangle and this angle is equal to this angle then we can say by the double a rule that the two triangles will be similar in all respects double a rule and triple a rule are one and the same thing in case of triangles because if two angles are correspondingly equal then the third pair will also have to be correspondingly equal because the sum of angles of the triangles of a right of an uh, of the angles of a triangle is 180 degrees then we have another rule of similarity which is called the sss rule or the triple s rule of similarity this states that two triangles will be similar to each other if the ratios of the corresponding sides let us say this side is a this side is a dash this side is b this is b dash this is c and this is c dash if the ratios of all the three sides are equal to each other then by the sss rule two triangles will be congruent will be similar so in this case a by a dash will have to be equal to b by b dash equal to c by c dash if we have two triangles such that we do not have any information about the angles of the triangles like in this case but instead we are dead sure that the ratios of the three corresponding sides of the two triangles are equal to each other in that case we will say that the triangles are similar by the sss rule so if they are similar by sss rule then their angles will obviously be equal to each other because in case of similar triangles the angles are also equal and the ratios of the corresponding sides are also equal 
it may be noted that all the three ratios have to be equal. If you have just two of them equal, then we cannot say that they will be similar. Apart from the triple S rule, we have SAS rule of similarity. This rule says that two triangles will be similar to each other if the ratios of A to A dash, B to B dash are equal. That is if A over A dash is equal to B over B dash, then either the third pair should be respectively equal in ratio. If that is not so, then it is compulsory that the included angles should be equal to each other. So in this case, the rule applicable would be side angle side. To review, if the ratios of all the three sides are correspondingly equal, then the, equal, the similarity will be by the triple S rule. But if we have just two sides equal in ratio, then the included angle has to be equal. And if that is equal, then the rule applicable would be SAS rule of similarity. So either you have two angles equal or three sides proportionate or two sides proportionate, but the included angle is equal. In that case, we can say that the two triangles are similar. Note that if this is a case in which you have A, A dash, B, B dash, A over A dash is equal to B over B dash, but it is this angle that is respectively equal to this angle then we will not say that they are similar because the angle has to be the angle contained inside the two sides which are equal in ratio. Let me now come to the case of three right triangles. Consider this situation where you have a right angle triangle. This right angle triangle is of the form A, B, C with the 90 degrees angle at the point B and from B we draw a perpendicular to the opposite side to meet it in D then this is always a set of three similar right angled triangles. The first triangle is the bigger ABC and the other is this smaller one and the third is the one in the upper part BCD. As I have told you in the discussions before that you should instantly mark these angles as alpha, mark this as theta. Then since alpha and theta are the angles of the bigger right angle triangle, their sum will be 90 degrees. So if you look at the smaller triangle here, this is a 90 degree triangle, then this angle will have to be equal to alpha so that theta and alpha will be 90 in this case. Likewise, this angle will be theta. I also explained at that time how we can establish the ratios of the sides of such triangles. Let us start with an example. Suppose we start with the angle alpha of the larger triangle. In that case, the side opposite to alpha is this BC. So we will write BC opposite to angle alpha by supposing we are comparing the bigger triangle with the smaller one. In this case, the side opposite to angle alpha is BD. So we can write BD opposite alpha equal to. Next after alpha, we will take theta of the bigger triangle. The side opposite theta is AB. So we will write AB opposite theta. The side opposite angle theta in the upper triangle will be BD. But we are taking the lower triangle. So in case of the lower triangle, the side opposite theta will be AD. So we will write AD opposite theta. And the third side is for the 90 degree triangle angle of the bigger triangle the side is AC. So we will write AC opposite 90 by and in this smaller triangle because we are taking the smaller triangle, the side opposite this 90 is AB. So we will write it as AB opposite 
90. I told you at that time that side by side writing these will prevent many errors and will prevent a lot of confusion also. Here I have just skipped one important thing that I should have actually written the triangle also. Triangle ABC is the upper upper numerator and the triangle ABD should be for the denominator. We will also have three similar ratios for the triangle ABC and the triangle BCD and also three similar ratios for this triangle and this triangle. Therefore, there are nine ratios that are available to us in case of three right angle triangles which are similar to each other. Now it depends from question to question which of these ratios is required by a particular question. For that you have to make some inspection of your question also. But I have listed the general method by which you can without error obtain the solution to your question. There are certain commonly used results in case of such a system of triangles. I will list them. If the triangle is drawn in such a form so that B forms the 90 degree, 90 degree angle and BD is perpendicular to the hypotenuse, then certain rules are there, certain predefined results are already there. 1 by BD square will be equal to 1 by AB square plus 1 by BC square. That is, the reciprocal of the square of this side is equal to the sum of the reciprocals of this side and of this side. Some questions have been there in the previous year's papers which are based on this equation. You can remember this equation because it is a bit easier only because there is a sort of uniformity that it is something like Pythagoras theorem but in the reciprocal form. Another result that is useful in this case is that AB by AC, AB by BC, this is AB by BC whole square is equal to AD by CD. AB by BC whole square is equal to this part by that part. This, this ratio is also useful because if you can remember, then they will save your time. But if you do not remember or if you cannot remember, then you can always just in time make use of this artifice to obtain your answer. Another related result is that AC multiplied by BD is equal to AB multiplied by BC. AC entire hypotenuse multiplied by this perpendicular is equal to AB into BC. This is one result. This is second result. This is third result. I suggest that you remember at least this one. Because these ones, they can obviously be obtained from the ratios above and the other and the total of nine ratios that you can always write depending on your question. Let us move to our next slide now. Basic Proportionality Theorem and the Midpoint Theorem the basic proportionality theorem says that if you have a triangle ABC and a line is drawn parallel to BC and let us suppose that it cuts AB in P and AC in Q, then the basic proportionality theorem says that if PQ is parallel to BC, if PQ is parallel to BC, then the ratio of AP, the upper part, to the lower part PB is exactly equal to the ratio of AQ upper part to the corresponding lower part. This is the basic proportionality theorem. The converse of this theorem is also true that if this ratio is known equal to this ratio, then PQ is parallel to the third side BC. A special case of the basic proportionality theorem is the midpoint theorem. It says that if a line passes through 
the midpoints of the two sides then it is parallel to the third side obviously if pq is passing through the midpoint of ab and it is also passing through the midpoint of ac then it will be parallel to the third side because it divides these two sides in the ratios ap by pb equal to aq by qc equal to 1 because ab is equal to pb and aq is equal to qc so in your question if he says that ap is 2 pb is 2 this is 4 this is 4 then pq will be parallel to bc he might say that this angle is 60 then what is this angle obviously this is 2 2 by the basic proportionality theorem or the midpoint theorem and this is 4 4 the ratio is 2 by 2 equal to 4 by 4 equal to 1 the ratios are equal so pq will be parallel to bc and therefore this 60 by the rule of corresponding angles against a transversal this angle b will also have to be 60 degrees the converse of the midpoint theorem is also true just like the converse of the basic proportionality theorem because midpoint theorem is nothing but the basic proportionality theorem in the case where the ratio of these two sides is equal to 1 it says that if from the midpoint of one side we draw a line parallel to the third side then it will cut the next side in the midpoint obviously it says it is the same thing stated in other words that if this is parallel to this then the ratio of this will have to be equal to the ratio of this to this and therefore q will be the center point of ac During our discussions we have given detailed proofs of the basic proportionality theorem and let us now proceed on to our next part This is another important theorem the bisector theorem which we have taken in our numerous questions that we discussed earlier If ABC is any triangle ABC and the bisector of angle B is drawn This is the bisector of angle B is drawn to meet ad at c then according to the bisector theorem ab to bc will be equal to this ad to dc this is an important theorem an important result that has been asked in a number of questions that we have seen and solved earlier so if a situation is given where the bisector of one of the angles crosses the third side at a point d then the ratio of ab to bc will be same as the ratio of ad to dc this is known as the bisector theorem the converse is also true that is if this ratio is already given to us then we can safely assume that this line bd will be the bisector of the angle b questions have been there both on the direct theorem and its converse as we have seen earlier there is another theorem called apollonius or the median theorem this theorem states that if you have a triangle abc if you have any triangle abc and instead of the angle bisector you have a point d in the midpoint of bc and you join a to d so that this is the median of this triangle then we can establish a relationship between the various sides of this triangle that relationship is called the median theorem or the apollonius theorem we'll mark this equal to this equal the theorem says that ab square plus ac square is equal to 2 times ad square plus bd square that is the square of ab plus the square of ac is equal to 2 times the sum of squares of this side and of either this side or this side because bd is equal to already dc so you can write it this way or you can equivalently write it this way ab square plus ac square is equal to 
2 into AD square plus DC square. This is called the Apollonius or the Median Theorem. Let us move on to our next part now. Another theorem that I have already laid stress during our study of similarity and also when we were solving previous year's questions on similarity, that theorem is the Area Theorem. It says that if two triangles are similar, then let the triangles be ABC and let this be DEF and let us say this is small a, this is small a dash, this is b and this is b dash and this is c and this is c dash. Then the area theorem states that the ratio of area of ABC to DEF is equal to the square of the ratio of any two corresponding sides. So it the area of ABC to the area of DEF will be equal to A by A dash whole square. It will also be equal to B by B dash whole square. Will also be equal to C by C dash whole square because A by A dash is equal to B by B dash is equal to C by C dash because these two triangles are given as similar. We have already proved this theorem during the study of our proofs of similarity. Now which ratio you use in your particular question depends on the question that you are solving. So in case he has given the measure of A as 5 and the area of this is given, area of this is given, then in that case you will use this part. If he has instead of 5 given this as 6 and wants you to tell B dash, then you will obviously have to use these ones. So which you use? depends on the nature of the particular question, but the theorem says that the area of this triangle to this triangle, the ratio of area of this triangle to the ratio of the area of this triangle is equal to the square of the ratio of any two corresponding sides of the two similar triangles. And the last, of, last important theorem obviously is the theorem of Pythagoras. Pythagoras theorem doesn't need any introduction. It says that if C, A and B are the sides of a right angle triangle, then C square is equal to A square plus B square. So this is all about our various theorems and the situations for the case of similarity and congruency of two triangles. Thank you.